fucking hit the road Our land is our home Mental health check. I checked. I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, dude? What's up, man? I am stoked to be here because we are neighbors and we've been neighbors for a long time. Yeah, dude. We're we go back. A lot of people are just sleeping on our our friendship. Yeah. I think we go I mean, we go back. It's hard because we met, we we worked, and then we both Yeah. And we took off. And then we took off. You know, we still saw each other from a distance, stoked on each other, doing whatever we're doing, growing and networking or whatever. But it makes sense because, like, yeah, exactly. Orange, California and Seal Beach, California, down the street. Yeah. And you've just been it was always it's always weird when you try to understand where someone's going or what they're trying to achieve when it's not your thing. Yeah. So, like, I always tell Luke, you know we're always like so close to the sun. Are we being so hypercritical of ourselves because we're like right here with our thing. Yeah. And then like other people are like, yo, you guys are crushing it. You're killing it or whatever. They're so amped. And it's like, Hey, like, Hey, maybe we're a little bit too close to this. So sometimes when you're on the outside looking in, it was, I was always like, what's his next move? Like, what are they like? What is the goal here? Cause it was always so like positive and whatever it was. Yeah. Even, when it was just like a small thing. Like yeah. the first time I met you, it was like you came and you were just amped. And I was like, I don't even care what he's doing yeah. or what they're doing. I'm just amped on his vibe. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a good point. Cause when you're so close to your own product, yeah, you're, you kind of see it from the corner of your eye. So you're like, man, hope he's doing well. Um, hope they're growing and you know, I'll see him when I see him. Right. But then when you like actually like exactly the past couple of expos, we like actually saw each other Right. Caught up, and I was like, "Dude, sick that you're doing X, Y, and Z." Right. But yeah, it, it went, dude. It's kind of hard because as business owners, like you do this to yourself so often. You have to. You have to. You have to be in it yeah. all the time. So yeah. people, are, I was explaining this to. I don't want to go too far off on a tangent because I will do that. I know that's one hundred percent. If you're listening, by the way, if you're listening, <laughs> see, <laughs> well, I I actually pre-record, so I do the out intros and outros now outside of the podcast because I realized like get the meat and potatoes, like have a good convo, just boys and yep. then or girls and then r- listen to it again and then you'll be like fuck that was exactly what we wanted to talk about right, right, you know, right. um, but yeah. So, what was I even saying? <laughs> you were about to go off on a sick tangent. I was about to just go. <laughs> uh. You know what, dude? <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, let's... we didn't even say the intro. So I'm here with Jason Denny. Jason Denny from Rick Supply Co. Is it Rick Supply? Or Rick Supply it's just Co. Rick Supply. Okay. Yeah. I, I always want to drop a co at the end of stuff. Like it's just like the millennial thing to do. Oh my god! You dude. gotta like, and I'm in that. So it's always like co. <laughs> It was, uh, what else the other one? Yeah, it's like collab. Co, yeah, collab. It's co, yeah, it's co, like. Company. Exactly. Everyone's like, yeah. whatever this XY company is co, short for co. It's like the new school version of dot .org. Oh, man, dot .org, wow. Dot .edu. You know what's funny is that now that, I mean, you and I are both millennial, but mm-hmm. Gen Z, if you think about it, we're getting older, mm-hmm. and Gen Z is who we have to, like, <laughs> kind of start marketing towards if, like, we care to capture... A, a different audience, you know? Absolutely. Dude. But it's their their mentality and way of purchasing is so much different from us, dude. Yeah, I don't even know how the world works anymore, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just, that's what I said, dude, right here in my thing. That's what I was going to say. Okay, go for it. I was okay, pull the s- mic a little close. I like, was going to say that when you're doing your own thing, you have your own business, product, project, whatever, the only way for it to really come across as organic and true i think is to be in it yeah and like fully immerse yourself in that thing and so i often find myself feeling bad because i'm like i'm so caught up in my own little world yeah and that that's not necessarily all bad but it is a bad thing like you know i I was driving back today from picking up a vehicle and andy was driving back too and we we both just left and he like texts me, Hey, I'm getting like 
some really positive feedback on the video we did. The one on Instagram. Right. He was like, I'm getting really positive feedback. People really are enjoy the fact that it was fun and uh -huh. lighthearted and it was comedy. And it was just like, I don't know, just let people in on like our personality. Still informative though. Right. So yeah. that was my whole thing is like when I was like producing that, I was like, <laughs> hey, I have this idea. I want to... I want it to be like a linear moving thing, but then it evolved into like, I want it to be loose yet informative, mm -hmm. like, because all of our content is typically very focused towards no conjecture, all factual. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be like, it's the best thing ever because we said so. <laughs> it's going to be like, no, no, like, this is what we're doing. Fact, 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 fact. Yeah. And then argue about it all you want. We didn't make anything up. Yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, dude, you're killing it. Because I just. Who, Andy or yeah, you? Yeah, I told Andy that. I said, yeah, you're, I, said you're, killing I said, you're killing it, dude. Yeah. And he said, we. And then I said, woo. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I wish I would have actually. I sent him something that was inappropriate. But to get to I, my, I have a feeling just walking in here, I know he probably said. <laughs> to get to my point is I, I was just thinking like it is important to like give it up. Like I don't yeah. need the credit for the fact that it was like a concept in my brain mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I, like literally like Nelson Flores was like, you're killing it, Andy. And I was like, dude, I'm so stoked that he commented that because that's how I want. I'm not in it all the time with Andy yeah. and I'm not like telling him, Hey dude, you're doing a good job. Like I don't even like check in with him. I just kind of want him to like, figure out his flow yep and that's important for me and but what i what i do lose it is sometimes i become absent because i'm so focused on like what's happening in my part of it yep that i'm like oh well did i say this did i say that and i'm not thinking about hey andy's like holding the 40 pound rig yeah yeah and it's hot as shit in our shop yeah and then i know he's gonna go back and edit it but i don't tell him to go he's gonna do it and i'm like you know i really should tell him hey you're doing a good job so to get back to my point the blinders the blinders is like i should just reach out to you and be like hey dude here pull it closer because i feel like it sounds yeah you can like put it right in front of your face oh, oh, is no. that better yeah that now it sounds i better. just gotta get up in it i, was I just trying want to, you to like long dog like, i'm jason denny yeah so yeah it sounded kind of hollow is it what did. you were saying yeah so yeah tangent crazy tangent but uh what I was trying to say is like, I should just reach out to more people that are in that struggle, knowing that like, it's just a little thing. Like, Hey dude, that new hat release, that new collab you did with, with George was sick, whatever it is. And just check in. Yeah. And I just try to do that with people that I'm close to well, as a good practice. I think, okay. So I want to actually touch on that. Cause what you just said right now, it's like checking in. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel like a lot of times it's really hard for us to be running our businesses. Um, rigged is on such a different um, like project projection than I would say easy supplies. Like you guys can you guys have so much damn potential and you guys keep hitting every year certain milestones that I'm just like, I'm so frothed when I see you guys release a new anything, a new latch, a new it could be even the magnetic um the, the, the yeah, pimple, you the, know, the fidlock thing, that type of stuff. Like any of that little stuff is, it makes all the monumental <clears throat> big picture, um, of like success. Right. Yeah. But checking in, I feel like you started the business, you have a couple co-founders, you guys all work extremely hard, but you guys all work su super well together. Um, do you ever feel like there's an imbalance? Like you're too close and you're too focused on growing this <clears throat> business where you kind of, fall short of like caring about yourself personally yes that's how i feel that's why I, per personally 100 uh, percent um so if you've been riding with me from the beginning uh -huh. you'll notice like i've gained like 35 <laughs> pounds it's not like, even about the weight I'm but saying, i'm saying like, like personally like yeah. that's a part of it yeah 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 it's more of like the stress aspect the stress of it. so like it's not it's not like to say that i work harder than luke or ryan it's just in health, Luke does things that are very positive yeah. for his whole thing. Yeah. He sets very clear boundaries. And for me, I'm like such a loyalist that I go so far into the negative sometimes. Yeah. 
that I don't realize that I'm in the negative until someone like Luke is like, dude, take a day off. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Burn your phone in your fireplace, whatever it takes. But, you know, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, internally like. It's hard to set it, boundaries. 100%. Like, do people, do you, have, do you ever have people, I know, fortunately, you have like an awesome um, fiance, but like, do you ever feel like wife. people, wife? We're wearing, yeah, we're married now. We're wearing now. <laughs> One beer, dude. <laughs> By the way, the goal at the end of this podcast is a six pack of Coors to be cleared out. Yeah. So Jaime brought me some Coors. Some banquets. Just the, the diesels, that light stuff is just, it doesn't hit, dude. It does not it's hit. It's not something my dad would drink, so why the would I? The banquets are good. The IPAs, I think, hit a little too yeah, hard so sometimes. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'll finish this one. So we're going <laughs> to, I'm going to see how far along in this six pack. I don't drink beer that much anymore. <laughs> I was doing a beer a day to keep the doctor away. Uh-huh. Shout out to banquet, but <laughs> it just fizzled out because I was like, dude, it's straight to the tits, bro. Like, it's getting heavy. <laughs> Andy's on the corner dying right now. Okay, so fortunately, because I think I have like a, a pretty good support system around me and I feel like you have a good support system around you. 100%. Do people reach out to you on Instagram or is it always consistent like trolls and stuff? Like how do you combat your work? Um, I do have a lot. I got, so my wife and the team is really, really strong. Yeah. Um, that's really, I kind of, it's super corny and cliche, but I don't really need much yeah. after that. Yeah. Um, and like when I get to add people or people just come into the team, like Andy, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about Andy a lot because I've been riding with Andy from afar and watching what he's doing mm-hmm. through a mutual friend, Drew. Okay. Vilmont. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Vilmont. <laughs> yeah. So I was always trying to get Drew to like collab with me and help me with video stuff. Uh-huh. Hey, just come to my shop and film for me. I'm trying to kick this off. And he was like, yo, you need to work with Andy. Like, he's your vibe. He's he's killing it. He like, is. And I was like, okay. So I, I found him on Instagram, and I was like, yeah, he, he is killing it. Like, yeah, yeah. He's in the pocket, whatever. We're This isn't Andy's time, dude. You know what? <laughs> Fuck Andy. <clears throat> but what I'm saying... So the question was... The he was an outsider that came in, but you allowed it because you know I, he's super I, supportive. You wanted that. I wanted it. That's I didn't allow saying. it. He was, he was on his own path, yeah. and I was like... I had to, I was like, immediately like, yo, let's do some stuff. Yeah. Let's work together. Like, yep. let's go. And he was like, dude, honestly, like I'm down, but like, I need to, I'm, I'm comfortable doing my own thing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever told me no before. When that was vibe. this like months ago or years ago? This was uh last year at okay. the first expo of the year. Okay. So yeah, it's just having those people around. On Instagram, people that have been following from the beginning, they'll yeah. pop in and like they're like not heavy users on Instagram. They're not yeah. like in the public eye or whatever. I, that sounds like lame, but what I'm saying is they're not like on there posting every day. They're like, go dormant for six months. Yeah, dude. They have nice, str- they're out there experiencing things. Yeah. And they're friends that I've known through the app or we've camped together, used to be heavy into the expo scene, but now life has changed for them. And yeah. they'll pop in and be like, I'll post something about the scout and my friend, Nicole, she just popped in, just hit me with the, like a tearjerker. Like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're doing this Yeah, and you're putting your hands on it and you're like actually doing this. Yeah. And, your friend in Nacho dust, right? Yeah. The yeah. scout. And so I do have a really good support system where people just pop in yo, how are you doing? You've been killing it. And I think that's rare because some people, when they have like, a following or they have a lane or they're doing a business most people are there to either take something yeah they want something yeah so they're only following to to see get some gain yeah or they're there because they're, they're your biggest hater <laughs> and they want to just be like lane that's unfortunate i mean it, it, uh, the last the one you did that was pretty fact dude it, they always want to stay close because they want to see <clears> like your next misstep almost you know they're not using enough simple green dude that's the <laughs> keep problem it, gotta bro. keep it clean with simple green uh, not drinking enough coors and not using <laughs> enough simple green um i think the the mental health thing is so big dude like the other day we were i was at an event and it felt really nice that it was a group of us like three dudes we were talking like asking about this person how they're doing this guy was a veteran we were talking i was talking to him about stuff and then they were asking me about the business and uh 
the conversation trickled down into like mental health and like actually caring for yourself, you know? And this was recent. That's the only reason I brought it up because I do feel like as of late, I feel like that conversation is being okay to talk about between dudes because I feel like when I was growing yeah. up and like our dads or that generation, there was always like, man up, suck it up, keep pushing, yeah, you know? And you're like, is. fuck, you're going to run yourself into the ground. <clears throat> During yep. COVID, dude, I don't think, I think I didn't leave the office like 12 hours a day because there was nothing else to do. And then I realized at the end, I was like, whoa, like I have fully declined. Like, yeah, you're em- burnt out. Emotionally. Burnt. Yeah, just done. Burnt it at both ends. And now it's just this little wick. That's and it's dangerous. Frail. It's dangerous. Yeah, man. At mental health, especially in this climate, like we're not psychiatrists, we're psychiatrists. We're not professional, you know, mental health people to be we have no right to be telling people what to do uh-huh. but we can refer to our own experience and like checking in on people huge can reconnecting with somebody because a lot of people are in competition with even them their friends or their homies yeah it's almost like a they're trying to keep up and i mean i've definitely been victim to it i've you know you grow a lot you, a lot you grow a lot dude and it, it's going through certain things with a business with friends seeing other people struggle with their success all that stuff isn't it's not easy and it does wake you up a little bit when you realize like yo man i'm a fucking asshole i or i had a blind spot there and i was just hurting yeah and i i was just projecting yeah exactly so yeah i mean all I could say is like check in on your homie. Check like, in on yourself. That's do, what I'm like. Do a do a vibe check. Like literally <laughs> ask yourself. And I don't do it enough. Yeah. I probably have never done it. I do like little kind of versions of this, but like ask yourself, like, am I happy yeah. with what I'm doing right now? Yeah, dude. Do I do I feel accomplished or like have I made an impact on my business or this project that I'm doing or my job or the bike ride I just did or whatever and just go like, what am I contributing to the thing that I'm doing? Yep. And if you can walk away and be like, dude, yeah, I I am. Then you're, you've won. You've won. And it's every day, dude, when you win the simplest things daily. Right. And then that is, I think what creates that momentum where you like, I feel good this month. Yeah. I feel good this week. I feel like I crushed it. I took a mountain bike in the morning or, or I, know, went, I went for a surf or I, yeah. I went for a hike or like I met, I met with somebody, a, a potential collaborator yeah. and I'm fired up about this project. They opened my eyes to like, they just inspired me, like yeah. whatever it is, it doesn't matter what capacity it is. I think just going, yo, I, I won today or I didn't win today, but I've recognized how I could do better tomorrow. Yep. It's getting real deep, real no, quick. Do, do you do you hit lists? So do you nah. do li- daily lists like Dude, of what I'm, you need to do, or are I'm, you just all over the place? I'm just freaking just <laughs> locking up the rear wheel, sliding <laughs> in. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. Like honestly, like uh, it's it's. I know it's quite frustrating for yeah. a lot of people on the team because yeah. they're they're like, dude, like, but when it hits, it hits, dude, and it usually does hit. <laughs> it's not. I'm not. I'm not saying it hits every time, but I have a pretty good read on like how I can get to that point. Yeah. Or like I can make it hit. You know, you can feel it if it, like that's going to actually hit. Yeah. Then you just go full. Like you, you can start the morning without that idea. 100%. And it hits like 11 a.m. You're like, that's going to slap. Let's hit it. Well, and also like it just, ev- I, I cannot take credit for anything that I've done that is hit uh-huh. because everything that I've done that's been good or or successful has been through collaboration yeah having a conversation like every and he'll be like yo i got this idea and i love our workflow because he'll be like yo i got this idea and i'm like "Mm -hmm." let's run it i'm like "Mm -hmm." and then i'm like but what if and then he's (laughs) like yo let's go and then i'm like that's gonna hit yeah because he came to he came to me with an idea i wasn't like hey think about it's not me directing or producing or telling him that's why he's here. You that's what lo- I'm just like, I like what he's doing organically. Yeah. So let him do his thing. And then sometimes I feel like I'm getting a little bit, we're not doing enough. Like 
there's a lot of resources for our company. Like, let's go harder. Let's go harder. And then Andy will come in and be like, hey, I have this idea. And then I'm like, I have an idea on how to turn it up Builds. even harder. And then once we hit that flow, it's like, yeah. we're amped. And it's like, literally, like, when you first learn a skill, uh-huh. and then you like, you learn how to ollie. Yeah. And then you're like, it clicks. You're like, I just ollied up a curb. And you're like, <laughs> it's unlocked. <laughs> I can do anything. <laughs> the eyes in the back. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just load up the chopper. It's insane. Me and Andy run that vibe at least once a week. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is good. The video yesterday. That hit. I was not like that. I was like, it took me four hours to muster up the like, I got to the point where I was like, Andy, what do I say? And no, he was like, no. And I was like, let's just go do it. Yeah. And we started running it. Once I hit Chris with the door one time, I was like, it's on. I got this. It's on. It's I, I've, hey, Chris is the homie that was at Expo? No, the other Chris. We have another uh, Chris who's, uh-huh. who who's mainly he's like the warehouse ops manager i feel like your team i mean your team is great i don't i don't know probably like half of the people anymore dude i don't either <laughs> i'm just kidding um no yeah All right. so, we, we got deep we yeah, did yeah. get deep yeah yeah so let's, just, let's, uh, okay uh, we're gonna to play sum- a game yeah summarize okay, checking in your homies that's it yes that's important but right. i think between you and i i th- and we, I just personally, saw. me and you need to check in on each other. I think I, I check up on you all the time. You're, you never respond. You are really good. I'm a dick. He's sick, savage, Andy. Okay, taco dust and first words that go with it. So I'm gonna shoot you. I'm not good at the name. Okay. And you give me a quick backstory. It doesn't have to be a. I'm sorry, no, not a backstory. Just like words of like, what comes to your mind when it, right when I when I hit you with it. Okay. These are things you own. Okay. No. KTM enduro bike. Money pit. <sighs> really? Fuck. I feel like you, it's like a buy once, cry once. You're stoked on that thing. The platform, yes. Yeah. I'm glad I invested in that, but it like it's one of those things where you don't realize like spatial. Like, how do I get it there? Uh, uh, once you get, <laughs> once you start getting into it, the, the ex- gear, the the gear. Uh huh. Oh, insane, dude! I've never spent so much money on like gear that I wear. Not that often. It's because you go it. too hard. Why don't you just start I, with like cool no? Pants? I don't go too hard. I only ran mountain bike gear and it was fine. Uh huh. But then when I went down hard one time oh, and I did. smoked all of the stuff and I was like, that wouldn't have happened if I would have been wearing mo- correct moto pants. Yep. And just the right jersey. Do you have boots? You have good boots? No, I have everything good, but okay. I have one thing of everything good. So I good. have. Like chest protector if we're going like hard and like I don't know the trail For and sure. it could be like a full triple clamp on the chest kind of yeah. thing. Um, and then good boots, good pants, good, good gloves, helmet. good helmet. I have two helmets, good. so I have one backup. So if I go down on a trip, I have an extra helmet. Yeah. So I'm not if I like really murdered the helmet. Yeah. I just I have a lot of helmets for mountain biking too. I, th- I think so. it's good though. You you said you bought bought one good of everything. Like just keep it that good. It. That's it. Yeah, so it, could, so it could be a money pit though, for it, sure. It, it it is. It's just it's more of the things that you don't realize. Like yeah. the first thing I should have done, what? I should have not and got not got the desert tank. Uh huh. And I should have valved and tuned my suspension. Yeah, I don't know why you got the desert tank first thing. <clears throat> well, because like I was like, <laughs> you know, you get all wild and you're like, I'm gonna link up these trails and we're gonna do this Utah trip. And it was like, dude, I have. <laughs> only had to ever put gas in the bike extra yeah one time that's what i'm saying it's so ridiculous i have five gallons of gas and it's, it's so like, gnarly it's so much dude yeah but i got it okay okay uh that was a good one let's go to let's go to the one you're selling now the gx uh the scout so that's really we don't want to sell that vehicle uh, okay it, it's more of when the scout's done yeah it's gonna be like a daily yeah. So the scout is a, a exercise in restraint. Okay. Like if you see any of my other builds, they usually gear towards the off-road experience. Yeah. And not as much as the daily driver. Uh-huh. This is an exercise in restraint, something that we can drive to Canada. Are you talking about the uh, Nacho Dust or the GX? Right. So the reason why we're even considering selling the GX is to fund the nacho the the nacho that vehicle is mentally physically financially i know where you're going with this (laughs) ruining and it's one of those things where we bought high in the market on that gx Uh built it as a daily driver and it's getting to the point where in like six months 
I'll just I'll just talk about it now. I'm building the Scout for SEMA this year. Okay. Let's so go. That, that's not out yet. That's huge. But yeah, I, you, it's almost like, um, geez, what is the word? I'm going I'm, I'm to blow it. But the, like you have to kind of... I have to, uh, it's a sacrifice. Sacrifice, that's, that's, thank okay. you. It's a sacrifice to make nacho the sickest nacho you've ever seen. Not even at that point because okay. we're so into it and it's such, it was such a lofty goal to make this happen. Okay. And I've been like sleeping. Like we have a whole other YouTube video on that, uh-huh. on the that whole thing where I say I'm building for SEMA. I'm two beers in and I'm already like, I don't care. <laughs> so whatever. But okay. it's so like emotional emotional no, damage. damage that like has it been that much of a just boom oh, yes dude Fuck. okay so just, yeah notch i feel like you just touched on nacho yep i said the gx so this gx and great you said great platform though right a- excellent platform okay sacrifice to make nacho what it should be and what it will be you'll be so stoked whatever we can get done by november okay um this one's gonna be a fan favorite the og tacoma first words that go to your head that one's you stump, <laughs> I'm stumped, dude. Are you? Yeah, dude. Damn. That that I was guess, a sick. I mean, it was it was that, iconic at the, the time. First, I guess the first thing would be like that rigged. Yeah. That was the beginning. We launched our flagship product on that. So the Mega Fit Ultra Swing. Yep. I cut my teeth on that truck. So basically, I learned everything. I came into the off-road world, I had a first-gen Tundra. We yep. were just talking about that. But then I got that because we wanted... I got a second-gen Tundra uh, Tacoma, and it was two-wheel drive because I was like, I'm not going to... Whatever. Just like, I'm cruising around the town, whatever. I'm not going to do it. And yeah. then I immediately was like... Ugh. I kind of want to go. So we bought that first first Tacoma. Yeah. I actually rolled it. I <laughs> rolled it. Yeah, I remember on the podcast, on and, the other podcast. And then the next one was the one that everybody knows about. Which was the gray one? What did you? Didn't you have a name for that thing? <laughs> this is just. Oh, we, isn't that where Taco Dust came yeah, from? Yeah, that was just the Instagram. I started. Yeah, I started the Instagram as a joke because I was like so <laughs> flabbergasted by the fact that people were naming their trucks and had Instagram <laughs> accounts. I don't want to go too deep on that route because you're already jumping way ahead of what I have on here. All right. Dude. Okay. So Tacoma don't ask me questions. La- <laughs> launched on rig. <laughs> don't bring me on a podcast. It's because I- you should probably launch your own podcast. Wait a minute, that might happen. Maybe. Okay, Junior Mint, Money Pit again. Ah, damn. Okay, Money Pit. It's so everyone loves it though. It's great. Yeah, uh, it's cool as hell. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It, it's one of the most most fun vehicles that I have. Yeah. Every time we go out. Where it's just such a shit show. Yeah. Like something, it's never my truck that breaks, but it's always like a stressful thing. With that, Junior that Mint? Thing, yeah, dude. I bought that thing and it was, I drove, I flew into Reno. Uh huh. Sold my Fortune 4Runner. Flew into Reno from Colorado where I sold the 4Runner. Flew to Reno. Bought that. Uh huh. Drove it to California. It made in the it. Of the night. I met Daniel. I remember that. Tiny yeah. rig. Yeah. We camped. Drove back. Got home. Realized the head gasket was blown. <laughs> How many cylinders? Immediately. Was it? <laughs> it was in the shop for a month getting the motor rebuilt. <laughs> Immediately. But the fact that you drove that thing with Dude, the blown head gasket. Bought, okay. So what I did was I just hopped on the plane uh-huh. with my tool bag, Boxo tool roll, uh huh, and my camera bag. With the clothes on my back. I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to try to get home. If it breaks, I have tools to fix it. Yeah. And I have, like, my phone. Get in it. Throw the tools in there. Put some gas in it. Start heading down the 395. It made it. It was, in the, it was like, in the winter time. Yeah. So it, so it never overheat. got too hot. Yeah. Didn't know. Got it home to old SoCal. <laughs> took it on the first trail run. Head gaskets blown. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool because it felt like, it just felt like it was like, I don't know. This is like, I, I almost wanted something bad to happen because I was like, either we're going to, me and this vehicle are going to bond. Yeah. Or it's going to break me. Yeah. And, I it, think it, and it, we bonded. I feel like you guys bonded super hard. The internet was a big proponent of us bonding because yeah. the internet was divided 
on that truck what what I was doing to it. Yeah. They felt like they had a right to to chime in. I didn't even know Junior Mint had that big of a backstory, which is Well, because I, yeah, I don't know. I oh, some people did. And yeah. It was like, "Ah, oh, I know who the who built it whatever, but I was like, I'm going to do it Your my way." way. Yeah, <laughs> like as you should. And so that was it. So that it, for me it was like a big a big fun project and it's now, still it's now still I'm, alive. Yeah, no, now it's like sorted and I'm so even my wife's like, you're never selling that truck. No. You talk about it all the time, but you're never selling it yeah. because you're so upside down in it <laughs> that you will like fight somebody if they try to lowball you on it. You yeah. just literally just because uh, people hit me with like, oh, I'll give you like five grand. And I just, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, dude, Fuck off. you're fun, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, the mo- you got, you, it wasn't the moose, right? Yeah. That thing was sick. That was the truck that I most regret. It had the slide-in camper from four-wheel camper. Not a slide-in. It had one of the first versions of a four-wheel camper Project M, which was a topper. So oh. from the from the from the tent Damn. up, uh-huh. same exact thing as every slide-in. Okay. But it it mounted to the rails. So you and said it a was tailgate. A, still had a tailgate. Oh fuck. It was not a slide-in. Uh-huh. It I it actually clamped to the rails, and I just made it bolt in uh-huh. because I knew I was going to use it a lot of road, uh-huh. and it would slide forward like a camper shell would. So that truck was by far my favorite and Rachel's favorite truck to camp. Yeah. And not try to go hard off road. Yeah. It would crawl good. It would camp. Just the vibes were immaculate. Yeah. On a camping trip. Yep. At an expo because it was like five people could hang out inside there, put both fans on interior lighting it was just comfy yeah but it it still worked as a truck unlike a slide in because i had a full bed yep and it had shelves or seating built into it but that was it king size pull out bed or queen size that's it though damn interior lighting so you could build it all out and the guy that i sold that truck to he built it out he did cabinets and shelving and all that and you still see it around I don't see it around. It's out of state. Okay. And the only reason why I sold it is because bought that truck in November, December. COVID hit in March. Got it. That truck sat from like March till August. Or I can't. I think it was like Ju- July or August when I sold it. Yeah. It was like so unfortunate because national parks are training. We can't close. We're going to lose everything. The economy, everybody's dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such a sketchy time that it wasn't, I didn't freak out, but it was like, we were so busy here that like, we weren't going out on trips. And it just, it's such a, a like a, a weird thing to see just that truck sitting it in the parking lot. It was my dream yeah. truck because it was like, first of all, when I got my first Tacoma, I was like, never was able to afford a Tacoma in high school. Yeah. Poor. Yeah. White trash. I remember you were, pu- you were pumped on that thing. I remember you talk about the Tacoma. You're like, that was my dream truck at the time. Dream truck at the time. Yeah. And then when I got Moose, it was like dream, uh, absolute unreal that I have this. Yeah. And then COVID hit, all that business was, we literally doubled our staff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quadrupled our production. Yeah. It was everybody grew that stayed in it. Yeah. Anybody that stayed on the gas stayed in it. So it was like, it was just sitting and that was a bummer. But at the same time, it was iconic because you used it tremendously for the brick supply marketing during the time you had it. We too. launched the mega fit. I remember the sickest it. photo on your website. You had that thing towing junior mint. Yeah. That thing was fucking sick. I was like, let's go. It, what yeah. a good freaking picture yeah. where the ultra swing. Uh, it was great. And didn't the junior mint have the ultra swing on it too? That was when I was towing it with the blown head gasket to oh, my friend, Mike shop. Okay. So yeah, I love it. So, but let okay. me finish, dude. No, I had one more for you. Well, you're, I'm just gonna finish that thought. Okay, go for it, Moose. It's coming back. What? Is it? Are we? Are we dropping two first ever? Like non? It's not. It's not coming back. But a version, a better version, in my opinion, is coming back. I'll Damn. show you later. Damn. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Taco dust. Times moose brown too, I guess. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Not moose, but that's cool. A version. We should call it some, call it something different, like like another it's animal. Always, it's always got to have some dumb thing. That my first thing is like I made Taco Dust account as a joke. Yeah. People are naming their trucks, and then what do I do? Name every single truck something <laughs> stupid. 
The Gladdy Daddy. That's okay, though. The Slapter. Oh, man. Walk with your boys. <laughs> Andy can't even keep can't even do it, dude. Okay. Real trap shit. <laughs> Where is that from? Where is that? Dude, that real is real trap. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Go, 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 go. <laughs> what was the first one, Andy? Shut up, shut up, shut up. How does it go? It was, I can't even it was think. Someone, oh gosh, it was like, and they. Damn, son, where'd you find that? <laughs> that I can't even do it because it's so ridiculous. The guy, the guy from uh, Superbad. Fogel. Yeah, Fogel. <laughs> Damn. Damn, son, where'd you find that? <laughs> Everyone lost it. Walk with your boy. Okay, <laughs> dream, butchering it. Dream collaboration. If you can collab with any brand, any freaking heritage brand, any new brand, modern brand, whatever. Dude. No, really? Dude, right now in this season, it changes, dude. There's yeah. so many, but I love. He's pointing at the banquet, by the I way. I love Coors, like, heritage and, like, the, the like, cult following. Yeah. How it was, like, smuggled. Yeah. And it was so, like, hard to get. And it was just such a iconic. Smokey and the Bandits, dude. Yeah. I just, I'm just surprised that's not what you said. What do you think I was gonna say? I don't know. For, I was gonna go like I thought you were gonna go deep heritage, like like Junior Mint, some crazy like U.S. Parks or Fit Garage. <laughs> <laughs> Fit what, dude? <laughs> Nothing. It's pretty good. I was like, wearing their shirt today. <laughs> Fit's chill, dude. Oh, they are so chill. Troopies are chill. Troopies are chill. You ever done an ultra swing on a Troopie before? I put an ultra swing on a BJ70. I had a BJ70. You remember that? The uh, black one? That was OG Spirit of 1876. I bought it I, for shout a year. Shout out Mike. Yeah, shout out Mike. Bugged him for at least a year to sell yeah. me that, and then he finally sold it to me, and then he, you don't want it, you don't want it, trust me, you don't want it. I got it. Uh-huh. Got it back, and I was like, I fucking hate this thing. I don't want it. Was it clapped, or what was it? It wasn't clapped. It's just so hard to get parts for. Ah. And it was a lot of work, and I'm way too busy to be taking on vehicle projects. For sure. Like, I shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. But I just, I have so much fun doing it. I know. And I've learned so much failing. Yeah. And then when I win, I'm like, dude, that was this like the best feeling ever. Yeah. Because you look behind you and you're like, damn, that's like, that's a fleet. And it was a lot of hard work. And, and, and it really encompasses the real trap shit. <laughs> and that's the main <laughs> part for me. Is okay. Real trap shit, building vehicles, but you build them with the homies that work here too at Rigged. So me and Kyle built the Raptor at our other shop. The one across the street. Yeah. Everything that could be done. Uh huh. We didn't like machine the Camberg <laughs> upper control arms. Yeah. But all this, we just built that thing in like a couple weeks at our shop. Yeah. Where was, what was it heading to? Like you were on a time crunch for some reason, dude. So that show uh, in Salt Lake, that first show last year, the overall, it was that little one-off Salt Lake adventure expo. Oh, the adventure expo. Yeah. It was adventure expo in Salt Lake. Remember mm. it was in Costa Mesa at the fairgrounds. Damn. So we were trying to get that done and it was basically stock raptor that sold the moose yep and it was like building this truck because we were we i wanted to build the most well the f-150 is the most popular truck in the world yeah and the raptor is the most <laughs> idiot version of that truck <laughs> so i wanted to build something that looked like a desert truck and yeah. it could be modular like a desert truck and actually be capable. Yeah. But then also be able to camp. Yeah. And then so I just built the Slapter. Is it, that? It was a camper overland desert truck that looked literally when I was shooting stuff with KMC. Yeah. I roll up in that and then I do a few passes like outside of Slash X over okay. like where my buddy Ryan had his F 150 with the Coyote and it's long travel. Okay. And they oh, were. Oh, that's not a Raptor? No. What? It's the Annie Raptor. It's a two wheel drive F one fifty with a freaking coyote. No way. Yeah. I think probably it's, freaking hauls it's ass. Fu Dude, it's sick. Yeah. But I did a few passes and like me and him are going and we're just going ham. And the, everybody was like, that truck is stupid. The Slapter? Yeah. They were like, it's so dumb how good that thing works. It, yeah. And it looks like it shouldn't do, like, it should not be doing that with a camper on it. Yeah. And I was like, dude. That's, that's what the you point, built it for, dude. though. That's that literally what you point. built it for, yeah. Yeah, so that was the point. So 
the moose had to go. But, but the slapter came in. It softened the blow because it was like a dream. It was like dream trucks floating away. Yeah. But this like very like on the side far dream like a Raptors whatever you can buy a Gen one Raptor a Gen two Raptor use whatever. Yeah. And I, that's I got a used one, but it was like a clean, very new used. I think it was pro it was proper because I think rigged needed like kind of like a race looking vehicle. I just wanted something that was. Steve's take a vintage motorsports feel. I remember that. Do it on a modern platform. Yeah. I wanted to do a Rough Riders build. Yep. On a new Raptor. Yeah. It didn't land well. What color did you get it originally? It was white. It's a white. Oh, mm -hmm. sick. Okay. Dude, these coors are ruined. <laughs> <laughs> They're so heavy. On are the, they? The, on the indigestion. Hey, vibe. Andy, you want to pass me another voodoo? Yeah. <laughs> we have Andy behind the camera. This is going to be on YouTube somehow, right? Either on your, your, you have a YouTube channel. We're just launching Jack, super integral. Dude, I love that guy. I'm stoked that Shout you. Shout out to that Jack. Guy. Jack's I, dude, at Arena Media. The vibe, dude. Yeah. But it's because he's so laid back and yep. he works so freaking hard, but he's not up in your business. So he's not like. No, he's in the pocket. Yeah, he's he's, that's the, what I'm saying, dude. He's yeah. an Andy vibe. Yeah, I know. I bound, yeah, Jack's at. You know Jack's at Arena. The homie that was with us at Expo, he's always cruising around, my boy. Handsome guy was running no shirt, and I was like, fuck that guy, dude. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, and I was, like, I, I was like, I wish I could be him. We bring him everywhere, and everyone just, no girl will give, like, Carter any of the guys a, like, time of day. They just immediately go to jail. Dude, he's just, because he's in the pocket. He's yeah. not trying to be, like, me or Carter, like, we're the show. We're the big show. Fuck with you, boy. We're not, <laughs> he's not pulling that. He's just like, no shirt, though. <laughs> no shirt, though. <laughs> What's up? Fuck with your boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, man. And me and Andy are just all. <laughs> Andy's in the corner. I don't know. I'm working. Okay. That was good so far. I want to go. So far. Nah, off. I love it, though, dude. Because that's kind of what the point of this is supposed to be more personality, more of like. Conversation. Give me, give me the background of how you started Rig Supply Co. Well, here's what happened I had a Tacoma, and then I built it, and then I rolled it, and then who cares? Yeah, I feel like everyone, there's other podcasts that talk about it. For sure. Um, okay. Would you ever want to see Cabela's or REI carrying Ultra Swings? Mm. Would you ever want to walk into it and see, like, you know, Tapui or whatever it is? The Tuli. only. I, I personally, I don't have like a big supporting big box like it's that's a touchy subject i yeah. guess but yeah um i think that it, it is cool because it makes your product accessible to people that like say if we don't have it in stock a lot of times we're like a little behind on production it's, but people have it available at shops that's it it's the, it's the same reason why we don't let other people sell online mm -hmm. but we support like a tiny rig. Yeah. We support somebody who's building vehicles and they're doing installs of premium products and we can help them grow as a business to be able to offer the experience that we created yeah. our products for. So I think... Isn't that it, what Spirit is? Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. Like Mike was our first dealer. I think he was our first dealer in Colorado too. Dude, Mike... <laughs> he's, is a, he's a hustler. He's, he's a hustler. Dude, and he's just such a good guy and yeah. he's smart and he's talented and he's always riding that line of like i don't want to do this anymore i just want to go work for someone else yeah yeah because he cares so much i think so too. and because other people like customers sometimes don't care yeah and they just think like well you're just making money off me and it's like dude in the reality of it is you're not yeah. making much when you're in the trenches and it's <clears> funny because you can you realize that yeah but a lot of people wouldn't realize it. So they're like, you should be stoked. You're crushing right. it at business. And it's yeah. like, dude, sometimes it's freaking hard to deal with customers, mm -hmm. marketing, a team, and still trying to be stoked on what you're doing, you know? Right. That was three. That okay, was three. we're going. We're that going. two. <laughs> we're on to three. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. This is like my version of Hot Ones. How haggard can you, how sloppy can you get in one podcast? It's like, damn, son, how'd yeah. you get so sloppy? Yeah, exactly. How the, the title of this is How Sloppy Can He Get? So you're welcome. Okay. Uh, big box retailer. You don't have a gripe with them, though. I, ha I don't have a gripe because they, they can help. They can help lend to the experience. Totally. I if you get all political about it, I'm sure you can be like, well, they do this in Sierra Club. 
I'm not talking about that. I'm totally. talking about your customer what, experience. What we created. Yeah. The product and offering the experience. If that helps somebody be able to get out on a trip and they're like, I was going on a, I'm going to Alaska and I need to get my spare out of my camper uh -huh. so I can live in it. Yep. That's the reason why our product exists or a reason why it would be beneficial. Yeah. And if that would help, yeah. But and if not, it was at an REI to a customer that would never know. Yeah. And then they're like, the only way I can do it is if I put it to my roof rack or, you know, it's just stationary yep. somewhere. This is just like bike racing. We're yeah. not in it for the money. We're in it because like we want to like give people an opportunity to grow at our company. Yeah. Build careers, make a good product, yep. build it here in the USA. So, I mean, I don't want to like, it's not a salesy thing. Here. Totally. I'm just saying I, it, it's an experience based product. We've had bad experiences with certain things and that's why we created that <laughs> that opened it up but we're not chasing that down we're not no. knocking on R R yeah R you're R not door. literally throwing catalogs hiring do you even have sales reps no i'm the sales rep yeah Luke's the sales rep you guys have our mark like andy's marketing videos and selling our product is our sales, sales rep. rep the um so the idea with you, boy. <laughs> i was on the 395 and yeah. i saw an older cat white hair retiree driving a subi and an ultra swing on it the newer one too, new latch, everything. That's chill. And so then I walk up to him. I have my hot Cheetos in my hand, and I was like, "Bro, that's what you do." <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, Ultra Swing, how do you like your product?" And he's like, "What are you talking about? I'm like the spare tire carrier." He's like, "I love it. I just I retired. I saved up a lot of money, so this is my first experience of traveling. I bought myself a Subaru, wow. and I found the Ultra Swing, and it was a game changer. And the guys were so helpful. And I was like, imagine that." customer Dude. at a Cabela's or REI, it's like that times a million because there's so right. many retirees so that are ready to do that. I saw your product, the sickest, like it was just so... For real? So sick. I go into the camp. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, and seeds. Dude, I was so stoked and I'm, and this is what I'm talking about, checking yeah. in. I was like so like in it we were just there and I was like walk in I'm like looking at some some freaking danners or I was just browsing Rachel always likes to go in there if we're in the area yeah yeah just check it out because the home goods stuff is it's rad. cool yeah it's, it's a, cool and I, I was like checking shop. out some fills and stuff and I just see your display and I was like my god <laughs> that is so sick and I was like Thanks, I'm not dude. stoked that it's there because you make less money when you sell through those things yeah but the presentation was so well done. Thank you. The yeah. way it was merchandised was just solid. Gracias. Chef's kiss. Dude. Gracias, dude. Gracias. It was great. Fuck with your boy, Seeds, People's Market. That yeah. was good? Or I feel like your voice hit it real quick. Fuck with your boys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. <laughs> oh, that was good. That, that, was, was, that right. was a plug. Um, okay, we got serious yet again. Let's mix it up. Let's get let's get, let's get uh, a little loose. Let's get a little loose. We're getting sloppy here. Yeah. Okay. Underrated or overrated? Okay. I'm gonna hit it. I love these ones. I know these are good. Mm -hmm. There's not many, so you know, fuck with your boy. You don't have to hit them all. Real trap shit. Okay. Uh, first one, zip ties. Underrated. So underrated, huh? Absolutely. They're fuck. so versatile. Like, yes. I don't. E too sloppy to even give an example, but <laughs> trust me. Zip ties are the shit. It's God mode level. Simple green is here. Zip ties are like holding the bottle yeah. so it slides better on a rough surface. Love it. Okay. Uh, TikTok. <laughs> Overrated. Okay. Fair. But also understand it's just not my demo. I'm too old. And You're crushing I'm, reels and reels was pulled from TikTok. True hate that though it is that's the fact because not because like i'm some photographer and i like but it's just it's it's too derivative yeah of what tiktok is in my 100 percent. so overrated based on that okay keep Fair. instagram as what it is video photo cool but not like Mm -mm. Here's how you freaking spill simple green and get <laughs> 30 million followers. Like, it's stupid. Okay. Uh, pavement rig meets. This one's tough. <laughs> <laughs> this one is tough. I'm going to say underrated. Ooh. Got you, huh? Yeah, he did. I'm going to say underrated because 
that is what built the community yep for us for me that's where i had some of the best heart to hearts with the homies yeah the ogs and met a lot of my friends the original in, followers in, in, of rigged. In the, not even of rigged of me as a person like yeah. that maybe i don't even talk to you but have done a lot of cool stuff it was just where the ideas uh-huh. for like maybe our company or just content or just trips or planning trips was that there. were like all time was there yeah it's not about actually that i it's if fair if we're just saying it do i think that more of those need to happen no Mm-mm. but i'm saying in my time frame and my experience of what i that was the community that i i invested in mm-hmm. where i would sit in a parking lot till 3 a.m shooting talk, the shit shooting the shit with homies yep that i consider some of my best friends so okay I think that's fair. And I you know what? I, that surprised me. So kudos to you. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Okay. Uh, IPAs. Overrated. Fuck, really? I yep. love a good crispy I'm IPA. I'm drinking Coors Banquet right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy, uh, overrated, yeah, underrated? What? <laughs> Sorry. What are, you, are you down with the IPAs or no? I am, but recently i just been getting disgusted by it. <laughs> so he said he says overrated yeah he says overrated yeah he just he's went, just yeah. disgusted he says disgusted all right fair <clears throat> um <laughs> uh, simple green underrated 100 <laughs> percent. but they need to dial in their marketing. budget <laughs> like their marketing budget that's it okay it's a fantastic product privately held since day one Family US owned. made product, That's family right. owned. It's sick. Down the street from Seal Beach, which is crazy. So good, dude. It's, you, it's part of your community. Yeah. So if you don't back Simple Green, <laughs> you're. I don't know. Fabuloso, we grew up with that stuff too, though. Yeah, well, you know. I don't know where it's. I think Fabuloso. I don't know where Fabuloso is made. Andy could probably find out. Okay, <laughs> uh, dirt bikes. <sighs> Underrated or overrated? Yeah. They're pretty, like, m- mid rated. Yeah, I wouldn't say that they're overrated. I, I, feel, just I would feel they're, like they're underrated because people like disregarded them for so long in before COVID. Like that industry almost died. It's true, underrated. And then now underrated. people are like, "Oh wait, these things are cool and like you can." Which is crazy. Like, so did you wild. grow up? Yeah. riding dirt bikes. Yeah. That's, so I didn't. Okay. I did kind of. Uh huh. Like my my parents still have, and my say my parents, it's my aunt, my uncle. Hmm. They're my parents now. Um, they still have the first Honda CT50, Ooh, Trail 50. Okay. And Trail 70. So the 50 was the first one I ever rode. Those were sick. 70. So I, I got, dude. Yeah, you, you, you have some stuff under your, your belt. And then 200R. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's what I think they're getting more into the actual like mm, dirt bikes. Honda. Yeah, yeah. So that one was non plated. Yeah. Rear brake light, headlight, but it was the like the one that I the first one that I ever that was like the first full size bike I rode. Yeah, two hundred R. I think it was eighty five or eighty four. Uh-huh. Year I was born, super <laughs> old. Um, so clapped out too. Yeah, like but you were so stoked, huh? So stoked. And my and my dad still has it. Really? Has all of them. The fifty, the, the 70, seventy, his SL seventy first dirt bike he ever bought still has it. Wow, Wait, I he just needs to die so I can get him. Damn, let's uh, <laughs> throw that energy die. out there. <laughs> no, Dad. no, and then what does uh, Luke have? He, he has an XR, XR one hundred, and he will never get rid of that. And thing it's he said. so sick. Is it mint? No, he would get it. I, I, I've been thinking about buying it from him, oh. just so it doesn't go to anybody else. Yeah, and he can. And it's like I don't ever want him to get rid of it. It's such a cool plated XR one hundred. And then this last Christmas, uh-huh. I went over and saw my parents and uncle, um, <laughs> and he gave me his XR 400, 06 XR 400. He gave it to you? It's only got like maybe 20 hours on it. What? It's just sitting in my garage. So that's when I was like, I kind of want to sell my 2021 KTM, KTM 500 Yeah, because I'd rather resto mod this boy out, For and sure. then that's going to just be my kickstart freaking... Find the compression zone. Yeah, and dude. Like that's the, it's just the OG experience. But I really wanted to, like, basically, like, get it back up to snuff, tune it up, do new plastics, just make it mint. Yeah, yeah. For an 06. And then that, like, basically teach Rachel how to ride a real dirt bike on yep. that. 
and then let her ride my 500. 500 is too big for her, I think. It's a big bike. It's a big bike. I think, why, why are we here? But also, I wish I would have bought a non-plated, like, oh, like an older Husky. Yeah. Non-plated trail bike because I... I find myself not wanting to ride on the road anymore. I know. I was so curious when you got plate. I'm like, why would why did because, you get a plate? Be, because, it, like, okay, in the last year, uh-huh. more of the red sticker stuff has been, like, you really need to have plated to link up some trails when you're out on trips. Uh-huh. So things don't fly like they do. And yeah. that's oh, why. Oh, that's, ve- that's very fair. Big Bear. That, that's it. So yeah, we did fair. Big Bear in the winter, and we had to ride like 30 miles back to the trucks yep. because we got to a trail, and it was fully, we couldn't even ride it. Fully, like I ate shit super hard. Other dude blo- broke his clutch, and we had to ride back on the road. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so stoked I got this. And then it's like it's become so hot lately yeah. that that's why I haven't been riding so much. Yeah. So I'm stoked for the winter because like now I'm in it, and my wife's like, if you're going to keep the bike and you're yeah. going to ride it, you cool. will, but dirt bikes don't take much space at all, dude. Right. When but you have it, you have it. Right. And I think if I just get that XR going for her, it'll Still. be like, Hey, ride this. She's going to have fun. It's yeah. not, you can get wild with that, but it's like the most mellow, mellow, fun ride with your friends. It's not really good at anything. Yeah, it's yeah. just baseline. And I think that's sick. I love it. So, so you brought it home already? Yeah, I have it. <clears throat> okay. Garage. So are we going to say dirt bikes underrated for now? Yes. Or yes. not? I would not categorize overrated dirt bikes. No way. No way. Okay. No way. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, because I mean, this is this is very opinionated. I feel like newcomers to this question. It's so, not me. Overland Expo. Saturated, and overrated. Damn. Let's go. Let's go. So, it's kind of hard. Huh? So it's a hard pill to swallow. It is. I'm a little jaded. Yeah. I have I'm not like an OG like I've been on Expedition Portal for 40 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't care. That's terrible. If anybody is out there like that, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that it is a bit overrated. I think what you're doing with like Overland Swap and some of the more regional smaller events, I think that there's more legs in that because yeah. The community's there, and it's less salesy. Yeah. Um, but I think there there's value there. I just think that it's a bit saturated right now, especially Expo West. Yeah. Expo West, I was kind of just burnt out. Yeah, and you I didn't was, seem like you wanted to move around much in the last one. No. You're just like, I'm here, I'm I don't, set up, dude, I'm chilling. We're here to do this. We paid like way too much money to be here. I got this dumbass Jeep. This, <laughs> Gladdy daddy. Yeah, it's just... You know, it was like you didn't build it for that though. You built it for Jeep Fest, right? Uh, Easter Jeep, yeah. I think honestly, Overland Expo for easy supplies. Now that we're like actually in it, it definitely brings in. I think you could try harder. I'll I'll be honest with you. Um, It's not. I don't want to like shit shit on you, but (laughs) I think that you have, like you said, you have more potential than I think you realize. I think you're so close to it, but I also think that like. You, you're so personable, you're doing cool stuff, you're connected with cool people like Adam and Carter and you guys, us. Yeah. like you're a part of our family, you know? Yeah. So it's like, and anybody that meets you, there's no one that's like bummed on you. Like, dude, that guy sucks. <laughs> Besides like, Andy. Guy, yeah, dude. But Andy's <laughs> like literally trash. So it doesn't even matter. But... <laughs> But seriously, like, do you think I should be actually a vendor there? Is that what you're saying? One hundred percent. Yeah, I know, dude. I think that you should really dial in. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Why not? But I think I would be stoked on it, and I would support it, and I would want to come by and hang out. And like, look at what Carter did with Nomad. Yeah, I think that he's doing a great job, and you do that. Yeah, and like. You've been doing that. Yeah. It's just diff- everybody has their own thing. And that's the coolest part about this is there's enough there's enough room in this space and there's enough consumers and there's enough people that can attach themselves to a community. Yeah. And I feel like your brand has community. And I'm not trying to blow smoke. I'm just saying honestly, I do you just have a really good vibe and community and what you do has a good feel to it. That it's like, 
asking questions like, you know, that you're asking is just, it's a fun way of like, you're thinking in a different way. Yeah. You're not thinking, how do I sell more shirts? <laughs> how do I get more people to collab with me? No, I think you're not pushy. No, and you just, I've never like, been. And you're just like, if you're with it, you're with it. Yeah, if you if get you're it, down, you get it. Down. Yeah. And Especially you. Like I've, I've always liked you because you've always been, I don't think you've ever sw- switched. We're blowing way too much smoke up our asses right now, but we've I, never but switched. But I like to hear it. Uh, fuck with your what boys. What do you want, Andy? Yeah, what are you doing? Nomad got the top five booths at uh, Oregon. Is that what you've been saying? Yeah. He was like, hey, hey, I saw him in the periphery, and I was like, <laughs> I I'm, thought not, like <laughs> I'm not I doing it. could do that. 100%. Dude, you should have. Actually, this is crazy, and I'm just going to say it here for the first time. At Expo West, we had too many rig caddies out. Everyone was walking up, disregarding wheels and being like, are those magnetic? Every single buddy, like, and then they're like, yo, we got to like dial out the rig caddies a little bit because it's like way too much attention on that product right now. Right. Which is crazy. It but is. yeah, I think we should do, we, I yeah. need to, I need to suck, suck it up and do it. I, I do love the Overland swap though. I feel like that's so kind good, of our man. vibe. I, 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 I'm bummed we didn't make it out to the, the, you the last so one. so many tires to sell, dude. Not that many anymore. You sold them? Some of them, yeah. But Damn. it's more of uh, it, the burnout. Yeah. So You're burnt. So <laughs> I wanted to do that, and you were like, come on, roll out, whatever. And me and Andy were talking about it, and it was like, we're just so tired. Yeah, it's a, lo- it's like, a long day, too. But, but it's like we're at, like, we know we had Expo coming up. We were just coming off Expo. Ramble Rack campaign. It's like, and we're not even, like, going full just we're not even going that hard yeah we're going as hard as we can with like not burning out but i mean if 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 rig supply is at an event or releasing a marketing campaign you guys are behind it which does mean you guys are revving your engines pretty hard every day but i think the most slept on thing that people don't realize okay is this uh, are you asking you want to throw me some underrated overrated <laughs> i can let's go for it i haven't thought about it you've been time to prep and we'll just see how good you i want to know how long i had i had 20 minutes before you were doing it that's why you were late you parked across the street at the park and then and picked you were up like, beers did this real quick and then insane. ran in here you're doing a fantastic job thanks but what a lot of people don't realize or even know because i just don't try to like <laughs> Smell me <laughs> before Andy. I was like filming, yeah. shooting, producing. Why do you think I was the first question I asked was like, How are you defeating burnout? And are the homies checking in? Andy, the answer is Andy. <laughs> He's he has taken over. So that's right. I do <laughs> scoot forward, dude. I feel bad because you're like, Ugh. the first freaking week, I was like, How are you doing video all of it and, and photo? You were doing product photos too, weren't you? It's all trash, but it, I was doing it. You, you're only saying that because you want me to say that it actually looks no, no, no. really good. I'm saying it because I don't, I don't want to disrespect anybody that's actually doing like you know. You got the AJ, Bandy Waters. You got the John Kingstons. You got the people that are out there actually doing it full time. Full time. Yeah. They've they've invested heavy into the craft, and like it's it's an unfair advantage that the equipment and all the camera bodies have gotten so good yeah. that like you literally can like pick it up a lot quicker. And like, dude, like somebody like AJ has put in like near 20 years of expertise, time, grind, relationship building. Yeah. Dude, creating a brand off his personal work. And so like, I, I hate to call myself a photographer or whatever. It, what I, what I have been doing for our brand as out of necessity uh, there's like one, boom. one great point right there, there is necessity one, yeah there is one uh, because we can't afford to pay them what they're worth and i don't want to ask them for free shit 100 percent. so all i have is my abilities to make what we can happen yeah and that and that's what i'm saying is i recognize that in you that like you're not you're you're not like always out to leverage a relationship or do like try to like Oh, I'm close with John <laughs> Kingston, and I'm I'm close with this guy or that, and it, yeah. I, I really appreciate that because I I know what you're doing is hard. Yeah. Um, I have, a, like, I was trying to launch a clothing brand that was a community oh, yeah, brand. Yeah. I love trash. I have all the printed shirts. 
five color or eight color shirts. That was an expensive print. I saw that and I was and pretty they're floored. Just sitting in there, yeah. and I because I'm like I don't have time to like take focus off what we're doing. So I yeah. get what you're doing because yeah. you're like doing it, and so for me, I'm like I'm not gonna call. I'm not gonna try to be like I was doing all this stuff by myself. That was the point where Luke was like recognizing, like, dude, this is undoable. Unrealistic. We're trying, to, we're trying to like launch this new product and like to do all this stuff and you be the guy and driving and th it's like all this stuff. And like it was just like to the point where I wouldn't, I'll never be like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. Can't do it. I would just do a worse job. Yeah. And then have to be like, ego. Ego's hitting me because it's shitty. Yeah. And I have to accept that this is me being like, hey, I need help. Yeah. And I think that's fair to recognize, though, because I think uh, the moment you you realize you can't do it all, but you have you finally have worked hard enough within yourself to afford to maybe get a little bit of help. Take it. And Andy. Take it. Yeah. Like, like cat, anything, CAD design, whatever you can, you know, you're not great at it and you really don't have enough time in the day. Right. To teach yourself another, take a pay cut you're, and hire someone else. You're like one and a half beers in and you're like. What do you just That's what I'm saying. Go, don't sleep on the banquet. I'm cracking into, Are you on the fourth? I'm cracking into the fourth and you're like. <laughs> There's only one. Design. <laughs> Get out of here, dude. Do you want a, you want a banquet? Yeah. Let me get a water, dude. <laughs> Let me get some no, green. totally. So <laughs> he goes, not totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andy, okay, get this guy a water, dude. <laughs> He's over there blocking the sun. <laughs> He's right in my eye. Unreal. Uh, can you put a dirt bike on a ramble rack? You can. Uh, did you see Luke do it with the, yes. the XR? You know how bad I want a really good moto hitch carrier? It's so hard, dude. Really? I feel like you yeah. guys have it. It's. Yeah, it that would just it wouldn't swing out though. Oh, it's too heavy. It's not how heavy it is, it's how far out the weight is. So it's not how much weight, it's how far out the weight is. Andy. I'm getting it too now. <laughs> Eating crow. It's creeping up. <laughs> I told you I don't drink a lot. Um, so yeah, it's it's just how wide like a, like a like a my KTM 500. It's yeah. Big. You put that on a carrier and you swing it out. The amount of offset before it, like you could drop your tailgate and how far out it is, that's the big thing. Yeah. It's like the amount of leverage, like it, it is unrealistic. It's just like the moto carriers that are out there suck yeah. because of like the actual physics of what it is, is. You're trying to do. It's so much weight Fuck. outside. Just imagining that ability, oh, yeah. though, Jesus, dude. Game changer. Who's the, let's give him a shout out, the guy that you hired pretty recently. He does all the design work now. Eric? D Eric. Dude. He's Eric a scientist, is, huh? He's the best, man. Yeah, he's a scientist. But he's like the best person ever. I never met him. Talk to, he's just a vibe, dude. Is he? He's not, he's not one for fancy things. Yeah. He's just such a good person. And then, like, like this is, sounds... Okay, he's had three beers and he's going in. <laughs> Everybody on the team has that special little thing and why it works. We have yeah. a really unique team and a lot of people have their thing that they do. Yeah. And I think that's what, you know, me, Luke, and Ryan, the founding owners here of yep, Rigged, Rigged, the reason why it works is because I'm like the like antagonistic, uh, I'm always going to push back and push harder, yeah. but it's never out of ill will. I'm never trying to, I'm never trying to win the conversation. I'm just trying to give the perspective of like, I'm in it. Like yep. I'm so in it yeah. that I'm like picking my own reality apart yeah. and I'm picking every little thing. And it's like every little, you know, every little thing that I do is scrutinized in a way that like, no one else can understand. Yeah. So when I I take that to the, I take that to the plate, and yeah. I'm like, when I don't we're think doing, you're narcissistic. When we're doing this, I'm like, this could happen. This could happen. And like, yeah. Luke is very, he's very philosophical about it, and he he really doesn't have an ego either. We just work in different like it's not polar opposites, but we work in different ways where. 
I just, I can like be the spokesperson. Mm -hmm. And then like, if he needs to be the spokesperson, he he can do it too. But he can like, he can, he can like, he can like separate the emotion where I can't. Yeah. And he can like walk me through a full meltdown where I'm like, I just want this to happen. And like, it's just, it's a good balance. It is. It's just something that is like very unique. And there's a lot of times where I've seen it not work. Well, it's because, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up too, is that the narcissism never works in a, a relationship. Two-way, three-way, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like right now you have three partners. And fortunately, I've, I, I've met all you guys. And you might, have, you might have the abilities and you know what you can do. You might have an ego with it, which is good. Because every one of, I mean, all of us, if you start a business, you have to have somewhat, I wouldn't consider ego, but like confidence with it, but you can't be narcissistic. Right. Narcissism will kill a brand. So to that point, this is actually one of our last points, dude, was- We have to, this stops? I yeah, thought kind that of a bummer. Just, I felt like it- we'll, we'll, we'll go to like Roadhouse Steakhouse or something after this. Like, I'm down. Or Claim Jumper. Is Claim Jumper even spot still that in? Opened up, it's called Finney's. It's like a craft house. Ooh. I've never been there. And that's when my wife's like, we want to go. It's like right here. She's like waiting for us. I'll buy you dinner for uh, your travel. Uh, Since you're so prepared in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 okay. What is the most crucial aspect when you're building a team at a brand? And you kind of touched on it a little bit, but like Eric, Eric just seems kind of like a golden child. You're a golden child. He's a okay. All of you guys. So are. think about this. He's a rare bird. He's someone that can like design, and he can also like fabricate too. Mm-hmm. So he's like an engineer and a designer, and he can he like took well like he went through the whole thing in welding in college, and like he's just he's like kind of a golden goose yeah i would say if you can if you can cad fab and then create yep damn that's all c's cad fab and create yeah no fucking f there's an f in there i just cares jesus no one cares he's had one and a half beers (laughs) (laughs) but uh (laughs) but it is kind of a golden goose because a lot of people when you meet them or and they're like cad they only know cad but like i said you, you just gotta like i think i'm not the best uh like I'm not gonna claim to be the best manager. Like, yeah, I I I'm really I have, I'm scarred from previous employers and Ooh. things like that. So for me, I just want to be treated in a way, and I want people to have their own freedoms. I want to give them the opportunity to do their own thing. Yep. I don't. I hate to be put in the position of like a boss, but it's like at the end of the day, I think when you recognize where people are thriving. I was, did you see that? Oh my God, I can't remember. That was insane, dude. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> when you recognize where people are thriving uh-huh. and you're not trying to push them to like, if you try to push me to do like a bunch of clerical work and like write a contract, not my... Have you written a contract life. before? I've signed a contract. Yeah. Contracts are hard. They're hard to, hard to like draw out like stipulations and your value and yep. who's doing what. So I, I think like, like for me, it's like, Yo, Andy isn't the guy that I'm going to put on camera to tell about our product, Mm -hmm. but he's the guy that I'm going to tell him the goals to tell a story. Yep. And he's going to, I could film, I could film anything Yeah. and be like, yo, the vibe. And he would just take all the footage, crush it, crush it. So I think our unique value and the way we built our team is we don't put anybody in like boxes and try to make them do the thing that you were hired for this. When we start to recognize, like, this guy was hired for the warehouse, but he is so amped, so enthusiastic, so talented, yeah, articulate, yeah, detail-oriented, he's the guy that needs to be running our, our customer service. Yeah. I think it's just valuing where you can recognize people's strengths are and putting okay. them putting the right players in the right places. I think that's great, because yeah. if you're thinking about building the, the team, like the question, right, like, you didn't... You will hire someone, you'll give them free range, and then if they're if you notice a little bit of change, just let them let them ebb and flow and they're gonna grow within the team. You just have to be present in that. You can't yeah. be absent in that, but And you're always here every you're you're here daily, right? Mm-hmm. Like Rig Supply since day one, you know every step that's happened in the business. I've done every job. Yeah. Except for Luke and Ryan's job, but me and Luke have shared jobs. Literally. Like our first website, like we 
Luke did you guys was, build that together? We built that together. Yeah. I was onboarding all the photos and product descriptions and yep. doing that when we were selling Baja Designs and Front Runner. And <laughs> oh, yeah. We you guys just, used to do that. We back. were going to be the Amazon of the Overland Spurs. <laughs> That's what <laughs> like, Rick Supply was going to be. We were going in. It was like, we had if a whole you need, marketplace. Yeah, I remember that. We're, we're going to be the number one seller of curated overland goods. Well, and the thing is, is like we were creating our own content. Yeah. So we weren't using Baja's content. We were like, we're going to do it on my truck and yeah. I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot and I'm going to be I'm a so glad you guys iPhone. pivoted, dude. We pivoted. I'm so glad. We pivoted because it was like, we were making money, we were doing that, yeah. but it was like, we knew that we wanted to do something more yeah. and you can grow it a lot harder when you're focused. It I wasn't say that a, it a lot. wasn't about the money. It wasn't about this. It was just like we're doing all this work. Yeah. And we're putting in all this effort. And we're literally we got legs here on promoting and creating campaigns with yeah. other things. What if we did it with our own product? Exactly. That it's like our blood, our sweat. You'll our see the tears. name and you'll see where it grows. Right. Exactly. So it was like it wasn't an ego thing. It was just like, no, we want, we've been wanting to do this, but now it's like, it needs to happen. Yeah, and it did. I think built. Yeah, I, I I think you answered that pretty fair. Building a team, because like you're you're in the you're just on the said ground a bunch floor. of words and I don't words. Know. What Damn. else you got, dude? What I don't else know. Did you prepare in <laughs> the five seconds that you prepared for this. You're mad. You you don't I'm like not this. I'm mad, dude. Damn. I just know it's coming to an end, and I'm like, well, I. Falling short. Oh, okay. Here we go. This is a good. This is a good one. All right. This is very business related. What industry do you see camping, and car and overlanding best merging with? Camp. So, what current industry mm -hmm. that's already you know pinnacle, huge, what it, whatever it is? There's so many out there, and I'm not even talking about only outdoor. It can be like cycling. Real? That's really. Dude, it's happening. It's been a thing already, though, isn't okay, it? Okay, so you want one more than that? Give me like, give me something off the wall, like, like literally NFL. Like, there's so much though, because it's like already crossing over to the surf. It's already into skate. Skate, not so much Autumn. actually. Oh, fuck. What would it? Well, because skate, I got... no. Um, surf, yes. Surf is skate, was yes, dead. So think yeah. about this. Big boy living out of van, built out of van, and all that stuff, like. It's like BMX. It's kind of skate. It's in the same realm. You can. I, I split like BMX and skate into the same thing because like you got guys like crossing over like Dylan Stark in, from BMX into like doing full mountain bike edits. He's doing BMX tricks on a mountain bike. So it's like hybrid. I'll, I'll give you one. What are you going to give me? One? This is this is one thing that I wish I had more financing or like in the right room for this type of stuff for licensing deals. But like Rick Supply could win licensing with like MLB or NFL because the tailgating experiences crossovers cross over to the car camping experience. Here, here, let's see what happens here. Okay. There's a brand out there that I'm like. <laughs> Trash or great? No, it's. It's good. Okay. But I think if they would just like focus on NFL and it would crush. MLB, it would be just like, fuck with your boys. <laughs> what is it? Hitchfire, dude. Oh, yeah. Imagine. Why, why are you not going to oh. every single, every single sporting event and tailgating and just going, Real trap shit. Hot dogs on the stick. I literally <laughs> don't understand it, dude. It's unreal. I saw him at Expo and I'm like, what are you guys doing here? Like, it makes sense there. God. Yes. But also, you, dude, your bar stool sports vibe. Yeah. Like, literally, like. Make it funny. Make it, make it work for MLB, NFL, and make that shit funny. Partner with bar stool sports. Partner with all those, like, funny Instagram accounts. Put beers, put a cooler Just built into it. Just have fun, dude. It's God. your product is the vibe. It's I can't like you said that. I'm it's like, the rooftop tent shook. of barbecues. Damn. Did you know that the one of the the, the founder of Tapui, Hitchfire? he's oh. Hitchfire. I can imagine. But like, he think probably of, sold Tapui for like <laughs> moco money. Yeah. Just like, not that much actually. Come on. I For him to start and then sell it to, it sold to Thule, right? 
Or Yakima. It was actually, in my opinion, undervalued. Really? Yeah. Tapui? They only had rooftop tents. Right. And there was no freaking... But they are the OG. Like, maybe you're a little late, and that's why you're you're not putting respect on Tapui's name. Okay. But it they're like an OG. So you're... But they didn't have any... Uh, any like credentials of saying like we are the originator they, right? they don't have like ip that's what i'm river. saying yes <clears throat> so as a like from business perspective like but Ryan they, they, but would they say built that a community around it and they had like two bottom they had like rooftop tent fest or whatever it was they did tapui what was it tapui rooftop tent fest and it was like that's kind of badass it if they was had, they did they had a community it that, that's what i'm saying it all comes back to community yeah it's not about the product it's not about this beer it's not about the bottle <laughs> whatever the stubby bottle it's about the peep like the community that you build around the brand it's hard when you go to sell though because that doesn't count in the uh in the sale it doesn't count as in the sale but it is brand equity it is brand equity but <clears throat> ip is everything when you sell 100 percent. yeah and we got that so fuck with oh, your boy. So try again. <laughs> try yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. Would you so, sell? I, personally, I don't. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you would. Yeah, but like, not really. Really? Not now. Not now. There's no way. Dude. No hell no. How long have you been in business? Like five years. 2018 is when we launched the Ultra Swing. So like late 17. Yeah. Like pushing five years almost. But people people have been asking that about the rate caddy is like, would you sell like the IP and everything? And I'm like, you no. have it. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? You have I? it. Yes. I've told you this, dude. Why would I sell I in two years? I'm sleeping on you though. I didn't know that you had that. Why would I sell the name and the idea and the property of that in two years of being in business? No, you wouldn't. Because you're too scared to get a booth at Expo, <laughs> Ex El Run Expo. <laughs> yeah, tighten them up. Get nervous. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get in, dude. I know. I just don't. Fuck, I don't. Why? I don't know. Why? I'd rather be like the cool underground brand forever, and uh, you just sell a bunch of shit online. I respect it. Than to be like this blown out, like easy up, ten by ten brand. And like we're See, crushing it. So the thing is, is you're feeling the saturation in the market. Yeah. It, it, the vibe isn't there. And that's why I was on the fence about pavement rigged meetups yeah. and the community aspect because I feel like that's where you built your whole brand. I would you rather be you, on this podcast with you in a YouTube video with Busta hanging out with Andy and everyone's like, damn, there's, I keep seeing the I got to tell you, everywhere. this is the funnest, funnest conversation I've had. What? You're blowing smoke One, in my ass again. No, I'm not even kidding. I wish John was here. Because are you guys still doing the your guys' podcast? This is the podcast. You you are. I on wish it. he was here because it, this is the funnest conversation I've had. Yeah. And I, I hate that it's like a half, a half thing. Yeah. Because it's like your thing, but yeah, this is like one of the funnest. I'm like, stoked. Well, I really enjoyed the anything or the new legend four by four podcast. That was fun too. Sean is such a rad dude and. My scout build would not be possible. It, he's freaking He got the ball rolling, dude. Artsy, he, dude. Dude, and he's the best vibe. Have you seen the dude? I saw him at Oak West. His vibes he are just up. so good. I love him. He I looked like him. freaking the Big Lebowski. He walked up and I'm like, everyone clear the way. Just like, get out of here. He's dude. a vibe. Yeah, right. Untouchable. Right. He so, had, yeah. He I'm was, not going to push you on the expo thing. I get it. Yeah. I think we like, should do some New stuff. Legend could be in a freaking expo booth and crush they're out, it. They're out like you, though. Yeah, they're like, fuck it. We're crushing it on our own. Yes, we're just smashing, dude. Okay, uh, let's do... So we do baked in ads. I mean, I'm probably going to record one for Nomad when I get back. Um, but <laughs> let's do a baked in ad. Let's get a KMC one. I'll pay for it myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting that out. It's all made in China anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Give me. I want to. It's not though. KMC okay, okay, makes wheels in the U.S., dude. So try again. <laughs> okay, but wait. Also, it's okay. I want to hear. I want to get like from you. Yeah. Give me. Give me like a good ad about rigged the Ramble Rack the Ultra Swing the team. Like, just tell people what's up. <laughs> That's a lot. You said a lot. So you want me to do what now? Like, all right. Here it is. <clears throat> this is. If I was gonna do an ad for Rig Supply, it'd be like Rig Supply. Made in the USA, based out of Orange, California. Yeah, so Rig Supply is, we're the makers of the Ultra Swing. Mm -hmm. Hitch mounted, modular, hitch rack system. So it can be a tire carrier, it can be a bike swing, drop down table, whatever your 
gear that you need to carry, whatever the essential stuff you need for your trips, or daily usage, like swinging a bike rack out so you can fold down your tailgate, sit down, have a conversation with your bro like this, get your tailgate down, Yep. that's it. Yep. it and in Tacoma, if you have a Thule bike rack or any other bike rack on the market that's a good bike rack, you can't do that because it's in the way. 100%. Go out on a camping trip. You don't want to modify your vehicle completely. You don't want that that swing out to be integrated permanently. You don't want to lose your rear bumper. So you're going out on a trip and you want to do that. That's what we're doing. That experience that we're selling, we just we want to have experience based products that don't require heavy modification. They lend you the the all the modularity and versatility of a full swing out bumper. Yep. Get your tire out of the bed. Get it from underneath. Gain you some clearance a little bit. Yep. Add a drop down table, add fuel, water, propane, a bike rack swing a out. Full all backpack. That. It's just a full truck backpack. 100%. That is removable when you get back from the trip if that's what your vibe is. Yes. But most people keep it on because their vibe is going out every single weekend, going to the trailhead to ride bikes every single day. So Trailheads. We talked about we talked about like going to the MLB game or NFL exactly. tailgating. No, it's so no matter many, what you exactly. need to do, it is so versatile. And where is it made? Right here in the U.S. And who's the team? Rig supply team. It's all in house, baby. It's all in house. So Let's we're go. not. Yeah, exactly. Engineered, designed, fabricated. Everything is here in the U.S. It's that's. That's what we've been doing since day one, and that's what we want to continue to do. I don't want to end this podcast right now because it has actually been really fun. I don't want it to end on like some salesy thing. No, dude, it's not salesy because it's why we met at the table. I don't want to end it because I have two, two more? and a half more beers. Oh my god! So Should make we it longer. Going? What else you got? And know. let me hit you. Let me hit you with the underrated, overrated. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear that from you. Okay. <clears throat> also, if you're not following, let's just because we we we're in it pretty deep. Rig Supply at on Instagram. Yep. Not and just rig, rig, it's just Rig Supply. It's just Rig Supply on Instagram. RigSupply.com. Andy. Andy is Dano. Dano. Fifty three. Yeah. What is it, dude? What, what Help is us it? out. It's my last name, Sedano, but it's a five three. A five three Sedano. <laughs> No. Wait, no. What is it, dude? 5-3 <laughs> Dano. Dude. Oh, 5-3 five, five, Dano. Dude, but it's so Sedano. sloppy That is right slops, dude. I'm cross-eyed. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, no, but the it, the handle, you should change that, dude. No, he had it. He had yeah, you did it Sedano. Normal. And he like made some old, like, I'm taking a stand. I'm ah, making it I, my name. And then a week cringe. later, 53 Dano. Cringe. Fuck you, Dano. <laughs> He was mad too because I was like, "Oh, what up, Andy Sedano?" And you're like, "Dude, it's actually just Sedano." And I was like, "All right, for it's sure, actually dude. whitewashed. It's but actually my whitewashed. gooch is black." <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, four beers, I'm done. <laughs> Unnecessary flex. Underrated, overrated. Go. Toyota community. Uh, uh underrated. Because the what people think about the Toyota community is just the outside perspective. So it's Tacomas, you know, the Forerunners. But the community goes so much deeper. It does. And getting really tight with the Squirrel Concepts boys and just seeing how fucking cool that Dude, shit is. Dude, I recently is. started following them. They're fucking cool. Yeah, and so it's now real I, cool. they've actually transitioned me. I was t- Toyota hater. I was really? Like, nah, I was like Ford all well, the way. Because it gets so much hype. It's too hyped. But check this out. Okay. Let me, let me, let me dial you in. Instagram like curates your feed whatever you like you know you know like me you know rig you know all these guys that are all kind of like in that network yeah so that's all you see yeah but like when you when Pull you go outside out. of that it's it's really refreshing and then that's i think that's why it's underrated just because the vintage toyota community goes so deep like fit fit garage is doing some good stuff a lot of land cruiser stuff a lot of imports when you go overseas the toyota, the toyota culture overseas is insane um so yeah i think underrated okay um didn't have any time to prepare <laughs> what do we got i just gotta like read your vibe dude. i have no vibes you know this okay what about okay truck campers Oh my God! Underrated, overrated. Uh, truck camper. Like, w- are we talking about built like? 
people I'm that talking, camp in the tr- I'm talking camper shows. A GFC, Al mm. Cab. <clears throat> let's let's keep like hair like the big big dogs right? like that's like hard. super. Let's keep like super tramp four wheel campers. You know, like scout campers. I'm talking the like the GFC super Pacific. Vagabond, how you cab. It is really hard to talk on that subject because I actually have never slept in one. Okay, so you your opinion is wrong. It is, <laughs> it's wrong because it doesn't exist yet. You have no. I thought when you're gonna just say truck camping specifically with a camper shell, which is what those are. They're just a very high end camper All right, shell. Let's, let's let you wiggle out of that. Yeah, camp like truck camping with a camper shell, like you have on oh your my, F-150. Dude, that is underrated or overrated? So underrated. Fuck a tent. Dude, straight up agree with you. Yeah. Hard. Cause yeah. I've because I've done it. And all tent camping is not sick. Dude, it is the most also it is sick if you have a gazelle. Yeah. So if it's it's sick if you go to the places where you need a tent camp. Oh yeah, like where you can't get into a spot. Exactly. Yeah, you can't put your truck. But if you have a truck and everything's in it and you have a camper shell, sleep in the damn camper shell. Dude, the camper shell? Is a vibe. You, oh, dude, especially if you have a six foot or a bigger bed. Mm-hmm. Because, like, all you have to do is move some gear to the side. Great point. And then it's fucking real point. trap shit. Yeah. Dude, it's so good. Because, it, okay, so it's overrated if, like, the like the, the, the tent campers that we were talking about, it's overrated if you have a six foot bed. It's overrated. Don't, just if put you, a camper if, shell. But chill. it's also overrated if you drive hard. But if it's, if, if you, you have drive a five hard, and a half foot like bed, your fiberglass shell. So this is where I'm going to come in. Will that be destroyed? Dude, it will. Oh, man. Like like Daniel, Seek Out Beauty. He had Tiny one. Rig. He had one. Yeah. It damaged his paint on his truck, yeah. his bed, his cab, and it cracked. Like he had to get the, the camper shell warranty. The red one, right? It, Kyle did as well. His was cracked. They just do that. But if you're just not going hard off road yeah, and you're not putting a bunch of weight on top of it yep. and loading it up and basically doing what you shouldn't be doing anyway, yeah, it's... So good. So mellow. But, okay, if you have a five and a half foot bed, 100%, there's no way in hell I'm sleeping at a camper show. I need a I need a rooftop camper. Because how tall are you? I'm 6'1". Aren't you six foot? Not even, dude. Really? Six foot on tender, maybe. <laughs> on grinder? <or> what? <laughs> grinder, wow. <laughs> Let's go. No, no, no. I'm, I'm like 5'9 on a good day yeah. if I'm not shrimping down. <laughs> if you're not simping and shrimping? <laughs> exactly. Dude, the simp... <laughs> Telling you, I was so stupid. I saw the I'm, I saw the graphic today, and you were like, "How good would that be?" And I'm like, "I don't need the font. I can just cut that and then vectorize it." <laughs> See, dude, yeah, you overthink it. I overthought it way too hard. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Andy, how are we doing on camera time? Are we good? But what? Okay, so we got <laughs> overrated, or underrated Toyota community. Yeah, Camp- campers. I let you wiggle out because I was talking about that mountain biking. <sighs> I'm sorry, I have to go overrated. Really? I grew up super hard in the moto industry. I never gave I never gave so mountain biking a try just because I see it from a distance and I'm like, I don't want to touch it. Why? I just never thought about it. But like now. Now that never you never would you even want to buy one. You I grew up in I grew up dirt biking and then I worked at a bike shop. My first job was bike mechanic and I never want to touch a mountain bike. <laughs> You're insane, dude. Isn't that stupid? That's crazy. Give me one. Let me try one. I dude, we have them. All Let me over. just try one and then you might change my mind, but I've never tried it. Okay. I feel like I could I could probably send pretty hard on a mountain bike too. I, I, and that's why it's like frustrating. Yeah, because I never tried it. Okay. So um, from an outsider's perspective, never trying, I'm like, that looks so overrated. Why why don't people just put an engine on it? That's true. I get it. I'm like the opposite way. I'm like, dude, it's just like completely takes all the 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 work out of it or the fun. I'm gonna get so much hate for saying that. Damn. That's fine though. Who cares? Yeah. You you can have your own opinion. Like it you don't drive a Tesla. And you could be like, I don't like I don't like hybrids. Yeah. Like that doesn't mean that they're bad. That just means like that's not your vibe. Your vibe is only two will drive everything. <laughs> Four will drive. Overrated, or underrated. Dude, so underrated. You definitely need that shit. Okay, no, but I thought I honestly thought that surprised me. I thought you'd be like, dude, well, here's the reason. I have two wheel drive truck, yeah, two wheel drive transit connect. Is your sprinter? Two wheel drive. <laughs> Insane. Okay, because every time I've I've taken that F one fifty that you've seen. Yeah. Everywhere. everywhere. But everybody did with their built rigs. And it's like, dude, they're built in to four come. low. And it's like, I've been in two wheel drive, just full sending. Do you have a locker this thing. In that? No. Yeah. I'm see, just full send. But 
there's been multiple times, dude, where I've almost lost that truck because I sent it too hard, and I, sh- I wish I just had a knob to throw that shit in four. Right. So I would definitely say underrated because if you're if you want to do some cool shit, you need four wheel drive. There are some there are some spots you can't get, especially water. As soon as that truck touches water, see ya. It's just slip and sliding, dude. Yeah, it's no good. All right. Well, I mean that's three overrated and underrated. That was great, dude. I feel like you deserve oh, your own podcast on now. the fly. Yeah. Just not um, drinking banquets. <laughs> Gotta pee so bad. Okay, let's wrap it. Rick Supply, you said ricksupply.com? Yep. Obviously, as you should know, if you follow Taco Dust, which you should follow Taco Dust, he was mentioning the Scout. If you want to see the Scout continue to grow and be amazing at SEMA, it is Nacho Dust. That's Nacho Dust on Instagram. Yeah. I'm kind of like trying to not get people bummed on it. Why? But I almost, I'm just like, I was going to post the other day, like, do you guys want to see long format content on this truck with YouTube? Or do you guys want me to just keep you updated through yeah, Instagram? I would because do that. Because Instagram is more scalable. Yeah. Like, I could be like, Andy, film me being an asshole right now. It's all about me. And he would just be like, okay, idiot, go ahead. <laughs> but, like, with the YouTube stuff, yeah. it's like, dude, I'm so critical about, like, I, I basically, like, need to, like, have three beers and then i'd just be like let's go dude yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'll go, get going but like i literally like everybody left and kyle was doing his own thing and i'm like i'm gonna start welding on the scout yeah and I, like i know andy was like you're a bitch no i wanted to be there to film it i think that stuff is crucial and again it, you that's don't my, need that's my therapy though it is literally that's what I, I'm... I my wife was like when are you gonna be home come home and i was just like you're on silent bitch shut yeah, up yeah and then like and then i text her i like sent her a, a video and i was like i literally i just <laughs> <laughs> he literally just said it on <laughs> i didn't say that and i don't talk to her that way it's just he does love his wife everybody. i love her so much she's the only reason why sometimes you know i do think that kind of going back to our original original point on this podcast creating and just staying like if you enjoy creating and welding and working and i enjoy just like i want to design graphics till two in the morning because that's my vibe here's my thing fuck it do you want to like sit there and go i'm going to give you a tutorial on how to do this no that's not my vibe at all because i'm not an expert in doing what i'm doing i'm i think that's you huh yeah is it rachel no it's somebody in oregon oh what the it's ben 406 garage oh that's where we say that homie yeah um I'm not an expert. No. I'm I'm like like I said with the Tacoma, I was like, I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Yeah. What I did a video on fiberglass on the Tacoma on Kyle's because I already did mine and I fucked mine up. <laughs> so my <laughs> thing was is like I just wanna show people that like I'm doing this. Yeah. Not for clout, not for like I'm doing it. Give me the praise. I just want to keep I wanna capture my memories and store them on YouTube. Yeah. I think I that's right. I want to be like, mijo, if I have a kid. <laughs> look at all this shit. Look what I did. Yeah. And then I want to look back and go, Andy, look what we did, dude. Yeah. We did that like with, like, that was such a fun time. Like, yeah. it's not, there's nothing about it. And so it's, it's, it's really self-serving. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, I want to share it, but also I want to keep it to myself. Yeah. I mean, so it's, I, like, it's I'm a like, balance. I'm torn between like. I want to just like cry in my car on the way home <laughs> by myself because I'm like, this is happening. I'm doing it. But also, I'm like, dude, I want to share it with people because it's like it's important to other people too. People will be inspired. Other by people it. are like rooting for it. I know. And so it's for me, it's it's I don't give a shit. I think it's I think that's uh, to that point. You do it because you know people want to see it right. and you care about your community, but you also care about yourself and right. you're doing this for yourself. I so blacked on out that, and half an hour ago. On that point, yeah. let's say thank you, Jason. No, thank you. I appreciate this it. This was really good. See? It's fun. I, I, let's just do it every day. I don't know about that. Come on, dude. We both work very aggressively, so this is for fun. Whatever, dude. Okay. I'll I, talk I to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll talk to Thanks you at me. hopefully not Colorado. Just go, dude. Man up. <laughs> Tag along with us. Dude, piggyback. I'm about to. Let's go, <laughs> dude. Okay. Right, later, dude. guys, on the next one. All right, bye. Later, Jason. Load the truck and hit the road. All land is our home.